Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're uh, focusing on Ionic Framework and Vue.js right now and uh, this video is going to be about you creating forms and form validation using V Validate. Kind of a weird name, but uh, let's get into the code. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe. I almost forgot to say that. It's uh, really important, but now let's hop to the code. All right, we're going to follow along with the instructions that were provided in the original Ionic View beta blog post on how to use Ionic CLI to build a sample app. We're going to start off with a blank template. Um, please make sure that you use the A, the type view, and also the tag view beta to um, get the proper prompts. So you see we've entered a command, we're getting the prompt, we're going to select blank. I am not going to include capacitor um, for this example. If you do, it's going to generate, it's going to take forever to kind of download and do the npm install. We want to get through it. All right, so we've got the first one done. Now let's import v validate. That looks like uh, I did not change directories appropriately. So let's try switching directories first. And then let's rerun the command, see if we get better results. All right, it looks like we're getting what we want. It's loading it up. And then the last thing, which I'll show towards the end of the demo, is the v validate comes with a set of predefined rules for checking for email, min, max, length required. And um, you can see all that with the documentation. Once again, I will also include that link in the description. So we're about done installing that. Now let's hop into code. All right, I am in the editor now, and we are going to uh, remove the unnecessary uh, content that's put there by default for the blank application on the home view. So let's clear all that stuff out of there. And the next, thing to do is, which is really weird, well first let's get this thing running so that we can actually see as we're making changes what's happening um, in the UI. Let's uh, move the terminal down a bit. Let's start with this, which I find kind of arduous, this process of you have to import all of the components that you use and then after you import them you also have to go down and define them. Um, so I've got the basic button toolbar item label input ion text area. And now you go down below to the components and then you define them. Let's format that up. The catch is if you don't do that, it will still compile, but the code won't work properly. And I got stuck uh, on that before, so be, be sure you do that. The next thing we're going to do, we're just going to basically set up a uh, Ionic form. Um, oh, excuse me. Yeah, an Ionic form. Um, we're going to use the Ionic item, you know, the standard way you see it, where you have an item and then inside the item you have a label. And inside the label you have the input type. Um, so we're going to use two specific input types here. We're going to use a um, input uh, with default text, and then we're going to use a text area. Uh, later on in the example, we're going to show how to use how to verify an email address. And so we'll add another um, text field, and we will ensure that a proper email address is entered on that to show how Validate works. So the really interesting thing you want to do with form is you want to be able to get the data in. And then you want to be able to have a nice um, object that has all the data and be ensured that the data is validated before it submits done. So that's what a tool like vValidate will do for you. As I quickly just kind of go through this process of um, getting the input fields done. So we have the original title input field. Um, we have a button which we will use for the submit. Let's copy the ion item and uh, let's change this to a body field. So let's, uh, please, I apologize for my slow typing. Um, let's change this from an ion input to an ion text area. Did I spell that right? Yes, ion text area. Be careful, there's no hyphen between the text and the area, and it is not camel case. Let's specify some row, uh, rows so we get a little bit of space here. Uh, let's see how it looks. That looks okay. Oh, let's fix the padding. I hate the way that padding is. So let's do a little bit of style work. So let's zoom this in a bit, a little bit, so it looks better on the uh, video. Okay, what's next? Uh, yeah, let's clean out this full screen and uh, set this standard ion padding to get the padding around the form, so it looks a little bit more presentable. And then um, let's go down and also clear out the style and put in some styles that uh, will actually mean something for us. So let's clear out the default styles. And then um, one of my pasted in the style that we have preset, so you don't have to watch me typing all that stuff. We'll see the error class being used later when we check for errors. 
Um, so now we have our styles in, we have our basic form in, we have our button. <laughs> Let's set up the setup. Ooh, set up the setup. Let's set up the setup where we are going to actually return the properties and attributes that are accessible in the template. Um, well, we can't have that empty, but let's put our, our blank return statement in. So it's happy. We get the errors gone. And that's where we'll return the interesting stuff. So back up to the top. No, what am I going to do next? The Let's put in, let, uh, let's do the import for the vValidate, which we just did. I hate saying that, vValidate. So what I'm doing is I'm redefining them from what they have set. So I'm calling them a capital V field. And then what I will do is the component that I'm importing, I'm using the V field like that. Um, just, just the way that I want to do it so that it's clear for me. So, um, so then what I can do is in my forms, I can actually use lowercase V hyphen field, lowercase V hyphen form, lowercase V fight, lowercase V hyphen era hyphen message. Um, so now that I've defined them, now let's start to use them. So th this, actually is easier than React Hook Forms, which I use in React. Um, there's no special controller or anything that you need to do. You just wrap your input field with the V field. Um, you put the error message tag below. Um, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna specify a name for the V field. So I say the name of my field is called title. Um, and then the, I get a slot variable back, which I am calling field. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bind that to my input field. So, so let's get the slot set up. Um, we define the net variable field. And then what we do is you go in your input field and you just say v bind, assign it to the field. Mm, not like that. Back, back, back. I'm going to clean that up. Uh, yeah, assign it to the field. And then let's give this, let's copy this and do it down on rows. And we'll just do the same thing. We'll copy the slot uh, field, save a little bit of typing, do a little pasting. Now let's wrap this uh, field. Okay. Have some errors, but we'll fix those. Um, title. We have our body set, we have our title set. Now let's make sure we put the name of the actual input item that needs to match back to the field. So you see we're putting the name body because that's the body item that we're working on and we put the name title above because it was the title. So we have our two input items wrapped appropriately. Um, now we're getting error because I've registered the form component but I haven't used it. So let's add the form. Um, remember as I said I redefined mine as capital V form so at the um, hyphen is uh, lowercase v hyphen form. So I wrap the whole, um, you need to wrap, make sure you wrap the whole form. The other trick is make sure you include the uh, submit button inside, inside the form. That's critical. I made that mistake before. And then um, I have my error message set in there. And the error message also once again needs a name tag so it knows which item to uh, map the error message with. We're going to copy that and we're going to put one down below here for um, my body also. Let's set that to body. Oh, looks like I had an error there. I need to make sure I set that all those names to body. So we have the field for body, which goes the iron text area called body and the error message body. Now let's go back up to the form. The form, just like the field, has some slot properties or slot variables that we need to utilize. Um, and so for this example, we're just going to use two of them. We're going to use the values, which will give us the values from all of the input fields that are associated with the form. And then we'll pull back the errors because we also want to utilize the error fields. Um, I'm just utilizing the error fields for uh, debugging purposes uh, because you'll see the errors listed below the text fields use it with the error messages that we're using. So that, that's how you'll see that. The next thing we want to do is there's a submit event and we're going to use the submit event which we'll call our submit function. The beautiful, bit th uh, the beautiful thing about the way they implement this is that our submit event will not be called if there's any errors whatsoever on the form. Um, it just, it won't pass the data through and call our function unless the form is valid. So we are ensured that by the time we get called, we will get past a object that has um, key value pairs of all of the form fields that we needed um, passed to us so that we can utilize them in our application.
And all we're going to do is once we get the data object passed in here, we will um, display an alert. We will stringify the object that is returned so that it can be rendered properly in my array. And um, that's it. Why is this complaining? Oh yeah, I need the additional fields for my JSON stringify. Well, let's put a null and a two to get that set up appropriately. And then now, why is there still an error? Oh, it's not a second parameter. Um, that needs to be concatenated. So let's just add these two strings together to get the result that we're looking for. Okay, values is defined but not used and error is defined. Then we have to get our, our excuse me, on submit return. Now let's go up and address these last two errors. So what I'm, I think we're gonna do here is just for debugging purposes, we will render the value, uh, we will render the value of values and we will render the value of errors in the page so you can see what's happening as I um, type data into the fields and you can see what errors are happening uh, when I don't put the appropriate values in the field. Let's just quickly type to this. Okay, we have them set up. So now you can see we'll get the values and the errors. And that font size is a little bit high. Let's see if we can clean up some of the styling on that uh, to make it look a little bit more pleasant, a little bit more agreeable. Okay, we things look a little bit better now. Let's just reduce the size of that. Using a header three. All right. All right, now we're done making it look pretty. Let's see. So as you can see, I'm entering my text in my text field. You can see the values are getting updated. There's no V model, no on event. It's just all managed for you, um, which is very, very nice. And then when I save the data on my on submit, you can see that I get the appropriate values returned. Um, there's no error. So let's, let's um, get some error showing up in here so we can see how all the error stuff works. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set some rules. Um, in this first example, we're going to just write our own rule, and our rule will just be to say that the field is required. So we write our function called is required, and we pass it in as a rule. And then now um, we're going to assign in require, uh, is required to both the body and to the title. So now we go down to our, uh, our setup area inside our component script. And we're going to create a new function. I'm just going to paste this in quickly. So it's a custom validator. You get passed in the value and then you return true if it's good or you return an error message if it's false. So, um, so what I'm doing is, as you can see, I set the return to is required field if there's no value. So that's what gets returned. And then my, er my V error component um, that I had created. Let's go back up and see that guy. Um, it will render the error message. So that's what, what you're saying, but let's clean that up too. Put a paragraph tag around that button to get on the next field. And so you can see the required message of the is required field is, is required field error message being generated. Let's pretty that up a little bit using the error class that I created earlier. So there you go. It's a nice little bold red. Let's add that to the um, other one around the body. So you could see the nice error message that you get because it's saying that field is required. And as I enter data in the field, the error message goes away, we get the data, and everybody's happy once again. So very neat, very easy, very clean way to get your forms done. No excuse for not validating forms. Um, there's tons of great libraries out there. Like I said, I just picked this vValidate uh, one because I like it. All right, and now let's look at the other capability that they have where they come with a package set of rules so that you don't have to rule your own. So in this example, I'm just gonna keep it simple. The links are available to look at the whole set of them. Uh, what we're gonna do here is we're just going to validate an email address. So instead of trying to figure out that ridiculous um, regex to validate email address, you can just import from vValidate. Um, let me uh, load in that library very quickly here to get us going. Okay, now, um, now that the library is loaded, we are going to import it. And so we need to do two things. You need to import define rule. So we're going to define our rules email. And then you need to actually import the rule um, from the uh, the validate rules package that we uh, just imported. So now I have my email rule. 
And then what we're going to do inside of our component. Also, you can, can you can define these at a global level, but for now I'm just going to define these locally. Um, I guess I have one form, it's not a big app. So what you do here is you define it, you give it the name, and then the uh, the code, and the code that we have is the code that we're importing. So the ID is email, and then the validator function is uh, called email, and that's the function that we got from uh, the validate. As I said, you can also write your own custom rules. You can kind of combine them together to, to define your own custom rules. All this is deeper in the validate documentation, but I just wanted to kind of touch it at a high level. Uh, what we're going to do very quickly is we're just going to copy all this information for the title and we will paste it and we will rename it to email or author. We'll name it the author. So the idea is you have this object with the title, uh, the body of it, and then you also have an author that's associated with it and the author's name needs to be an email address. So we'll go in and we'll change everything to author. We'll change the rule to email. So we should validate the email. Um, why is it complaining? It is complaining because I don't guess I didn't uh, return it. Uh, I need to do that to make sure the template can get access to the uh, to the code. All right, so now we've done it. So now you see we're getting the error that the author is not valid um, because the author is not a valid email address. And as we start to type, it is checking on the fly. So as I start to you know use my fat fingers and correctly type an email address, let's do this one more time. All right, mail.com. The error goes away. And so now we can go ahead with the rest that you've seen before. Let's put a test title in. Let's put a body in. Let's save our data. And you can see we get that nice JSON object with all the information that we need packaged up nice and neat. So once again, this is vValidate. Links in the bio. Please make sure you like and subscribe um, and leave recommendations. Here's the Ionic blog about getting started with the Ionic View beta. Um, and that's it. Thank you.